felt like um, Pakeha were going to let me down. Not only did they do exactly what I expected, but they upheld, in fact, the white supremacist roots of this country. I am originally from Lexington, Kentucky, um, born and raised in the United States. And I live in Chicago now, where I am a lecturer at the University of Illinois at Chicago, where I teach about the intersections of race, ethnicity, and education. We just wanted to know what the feeling is on the ground where you are, how you are feeling in the middle of this election. Yes, well, first, thank you very much for asking the question um, and, um, and having the opportunity to talk to you about it one-on-one, -on -one, but then also to share, um, because when you're really sort of in the middle of a really historic event, um, it can feel very isolating, right? Even when you're talking to um, Fano, when you're talking to friends and you're talking to colleagues, they're primarily people who, um, who think um, in similar ways. And yet you see the red moving across the map on the states. You see the numbers for President Trump um, going up exponentially. Um, on one hand, there's a lot of confusion, <laughs> a lot of asking yourself, what are people thinking? Aren't, aren't they seeing the same things I'm seeing? There was a piece of me that was expecting exactly what happened. Because in fact, I did not watch in real time the numbers come in. I didn't watch the tallies come in. Um, I was very nervous about it. We still have these uh, underlying attitudes that you're talking about. You know, just recently this week, uh, those attitudes have come out in the form of a uh, backlash against one of our Māori ministers, Nanaya Mahuta, getting one of our top jobs and, you know, questioning whether her moko kauai or her as a face uh, is a civilised representation of our country. How does that manifest where you are? I see. Um, a white gentleman um, walked by me um, at the bus stop and he started making ape noises um, and at me, um, targeting me. Um, and I just kind of stared at, stared at him um, as, um, as he walked by. Um, but that, in that moment, I knew that we were in a very different era. A, a man had been elected, he was not even president. He had not um, helped um, to pass a law, but he had emboldened racist whites to be free in public and express that to people that they felt were inferior um, to them. So that's just one example. The um, uproar um, from Pakeha about uh, Nanaya's appointment and also about her uh, moko kowai and really standing um, in um, Tikanga Māori um, to an international audience really resonated with me. In the United States, President Obama's election um, signaled to everyone in the country but around the world that this is no longer a white country. And um, if you are an active white supremacist or if you benefit in any way for white, from white supremacy, then one would have found that threatening to one's economic, political, and cultural power, standing, and sense of superiority. And I think that's one of the things when I read the reactions um, to um, uh, Nanaya um, and um, the fact that this indigenous woman is going to be representing New Zealand on the global stage um, and standing there in all of her glory um, with her moko kowai, incredibly prominent, um, signals to Pakeha, this is no longer a Pakeha country. It's important.
supported um, to organize um, and to fight and make this country live up to its promises to all of its citizens. I'm trying to stay the course like my friends and family and colleagues um, are saying and be patient um, and be positive. And regardless of who's in the White House, we've got work to do and we're gonna do it.